The topic is common mode current and chokes. What is common mode current and what can you do about it? So where does this current come from? There's actually several sources of common mode current. One of the most common is feeding a balanced antenna with unbalanced feed line. Coax by definition is unbalanced. Why is it unbalanced? Because the shield is at relative ground, relatively unyielding. Its voltage is not going up while the center conductor is going down. Its voltage is pretty well just sitting there. So what happens is the center conductor is, is connected up to one leg of the antenna and that antenna is doing its thing, going up and down in voltage. The other leg of the antenna is connected up to the ground referenced shield and it wants to do the same thing that this guy is doing. But it can't do the same thing that this guy is doing because it's connected up to this ground referenced thing. And as a result, it tries to do the same thing that this guy is doing, and it ends up setting up a current in the outer sh uh, skin of your shield. That is common mode current. Oh, well, how do you fix that? Well, that's easy. You use a good current ballon to feed your, co your antenna. That's how you fix that problem. Use a good current ballon. Understand that the reason why this works is because it is taking your unbalanced line and turning it into a balanced line, a balanced feed. It allows this side of the antenna and this side of the antenna to do the same thing. Actually, they're doing this, okay? Because now they're balanced feed. And with the current ballon, it causes the same current to flow in both legs. Current balance are not necessarily common mode chokes. Some of them are, but they are not common mode chokes. We are preventing common mode current by getting a balanced feed onto a balanced antenna, not by choking off common mode current from going down the coax. There's a big difference between the two. Another cause, a mismatched antenna leg impedances. It is impossible to get two legs of an antenna exactly at the same impedance. This leg passes by a tree, this leg does not. Guess what, they're at different impedances. This leg is a half an inch shorter than this leg, guess what, they're at different impedances. Everything seems to affect the impedance of the legs of an antenna. So what happens? You have two, ante two uh, uh, antenna legs. Each have their own impedance being fed with the same voltage. If you have the same voltage applied to different impedance, you have different current flowing in each leg. And the difference between those two currents, remember the coax wants the same current in the center conductor as it wants on the inside of the shield and it's going to force that to be the case. So where does this difference current go? The difference current goes on the outside of the shield causing common mode current. So how do you fix that? Well, we come back to the same thing. If we're talking about a balanced antenna like a dipole, a good current ballon will help because it in this case, it is balancing out the amount of current being driven to both legs of the antenna and helps to prevent the need for common mode current. But we have offset fed antennas and we have end fed antennas. Do you think that they have massive common mode current problems? The legs, by definition, of these kinds of antennas are way different in impedance than each other. And as a result, you end up with 
potentially as much as 100% common mode current associated with some of these antennas. So how do you deal with that? Well, common mode choke. You get a good common mode choke, put it in there. Of course, it's always good to feed. It's my philosophy. I like feeding every antenna with a ballon. But the common mode choke is what is going to be your salvation on this one more than anything. There's another cause. How about RF from another antenna? We don't really much think about this one. Well, think about it. You have a magnet moving back and forth across a wire. What gets induced in the wire? Current, right? You have a moving magnetic field, you have a wire. Well, what happens if we replace that moving magnet with an RF field? And our, uh, an RF field is a moving electromagnetic field going past a conductor. What are we going to induce in that, indu that conductor? Mag RF current, right? Well, what if we replace that wire with a piece of coax? We have a moving magnetic field going past the outer skin of your shield. What are you going to have induced in the outer skin of your shield? An RF current. The source of the RF field could be from a different antenna. You could have your 80 meter antenna inducing uh, common mode current in your 40 meter feed line because of the position of things. It could be the very antenna that your coax is connected to. Depends on, well, how do you fix this? Well, it just depends on how you dress your coax. What you want to do is you want to make sure that your antenna feed line is at equal angles to the legs of your antenna. That way the RF field from this side, which is go going in one direction, cancels out the, out the RF field from this side, which is going in the opposite direction. So if you're coming down, splitting the, between the two, an inverted V, if you have a dipole, it's coming down at right angles. It's how you dress the coax. That's how you avoid it with a, a, your antenna. But what about an adjacent antenna? Again, how you dress the coax relative to adjacent antennas, relative to the antenna that you're feeding, will make all the difference in the world as to how much RF gets at your coax to induce common mode current. And lastly, you can have common mode current from an adjacent feed line. Suppose you had a feed line that had common mode current in it, a significant amount of it, and it's running parallel to another feed line. You have current going through a conductor which generates a magnetic field, and because this common mode current is a moving or a changing magnetic field, you now have a moving magnetic field associated with the outer skin of the shield on one piece of coax next door to another piece of coax that has an outer skin. And guess what's going to be induced in that other piece of coax? Common mode current. So now you have two pieces of coax with common mode current. So how do you fix this? Well, you fix it by fixing the offending common mode current and the one that's the offending guy. You know, whether it be a choke or a, or a ballon or dressing your, your feed line properly, whatever it is, you just deal with the, the offending coax and you end up killing two birds with one stone. All right. Before I talk about common mode chokes, I do want to point out something, though. You see, the outer skin of your coax acts as a 
an antenna. Did you know that? And we've already kind of been talking about that, but I haven't explicitly said that. The fact that it can pick up the RF being emanated from one antenna and induce a current in it because of that RF field means that it's a receiving antenna. True? And a receiving antenna can also be a transmitting antenna. If you have common mode current in a piece of coax on that, that outer skin, then it is not only having current down the coax, but it's re-radiating that and can cause interference in other things because of it re-radiating. It doesn't stay to itself. Because it has current, it has a magnetic field. And because the current is moving, is changing, it has a changing magnetic field, which means it is emanating this everywhere. All right, common mode chokes. What is the idea behind a common mode choke? And the answer to that question will be found in the next video in this series. Thank you so much for watching. Until then, toodaloots.